Did you know that interior design TikTok is actually extremely sensitive? Well, I just found that out from my last video and TikTok regarding um, shit that you shouldn't do to your house. People did not like that. People did not like that I was telling them what and what not to do to their homes. But honestly, it's just the title and you can do what you want with your house. I don't care. You can listen to my critiques. You can listen to my comments and do with them what you will. No need to get super offended. We're just talking about interior stuff. This has nothing to do with anybody or anything personal. We're talking about how I don't like a burnt orange arch on the wall. And because everyone um, was so upset by my last video, I've decided to do another one. I have a list that goes on and on of trends or just interior design decisions that I think are going to be outdated really quickly or just flat out not my taste. So if you like it, if you appreciate my comments and critiques, then stick around for this video of shit that I think that you shouldn't do to your home. We are gonna jump right on into this with a very unpopular opinion, I'm sure, because I feel like a lot of people have this item in their house, and ever since they became popular, I just haven't really been a fan. I have never been able to figure out a way to incorporate this into a setup that I liked. Anyways, I'm talking about circular, round, velvety, colorful, pillows. Okay, yes, they're cute, they're fun, they're funky, there's something new, they're like a pop of color. There's no rules of what your pillow shapes need to be, but for me, I personally don't love these round velvet pillows that people are just throwing onto their sofas. I think it's a trend that's here, but it's not going to stay for long. If I walk into your house and you have them, it's fine. I'm just like, eh, you're gonna get rid of those and uh, I give it six months maybe. Okay, next on my list is something that I've seen all over TikTok, another giant TikTok trend. I feel like there's no one else doing this trend besides people on TikTok. I have not liked this trend since the beginning. I think it's an extremely odd way to add something funky to your home. I think there's a lot of other ways to do it and this one is just not it for me and that is the foam mirrors. And sometimes foam side tables or whatever else these people are putting this foam on. But you take this foam and you buy an old mirror and you like foam the outside and it gives this like cool, like colorful, foamy trend. It looks funky and it's something new and I feel like you see it all over TikTok and these blogger people have them in these like cute little homes. It's honestly an eyesore. It looks extremely crafty and weird and I know it's on a budget and I'm going to make a video on all of these critiques I make giving you alternate options because I know I'm just throwing out a bunch of things that I hate and you know some people want to make a cool mirror on a budget and I think that there's other ways other than this weird ass colored foam that people are even making coffee tables or side tables out of it makes no sense. I don't know who came up with it. It's very artistic and it's very crafty, but it's definitely one of those trends that I am ready for that one to get out because it's going to be funny in like one year. We're going to be like, I can't believe I had a foam mirror hanging on my wall. It's so close to being a unique piece of art, but it's just not there. It's just not quite there. Sorry. This next trend or interior design uh, choice has been around for a while now. Uh, I talk about it in some of my home reviews. I cannot wait until this trend is next. And that is faux marble or even real marble everything. Why is everyone so obsessed with all marble everything? I don't understand. Why don't you want to incorporate some type of stone or unique granite or anything else but marble? I think small touches of marble is really nice. You're gonna have marble in your bathroom. Does it need to be in your kitchen and everywhere else? Let's choose some spots to have marble and let's keep it like that because right now the big faux marble trend where people are making faux marble on their counters with this weird paint that creates this faux marble look. I just think it's the weirdest way to cheaply redo your countertops. I think there are plenty of other ways where you can upgrade your kitchen without having faux marble in there. Honestly, even if you go to Home Depot, you can get really cheap tile to tile your backsplash with. I mean, even with mine, I have this type of tile. This is really cheap old bathroom tile. I didn't want to do the subway tiles, and this was something that I felt was a little bit more unique, but it was also so, so cheap. The faux marble is actually a perfect segue into my next topic of discussion, which is all white 
everything. I feel like a few years ago, it was really popular to have everything in your house white. It felt so fresh. You have this white kitchen, you have a white family room, a white sofa, everything was white. When you first look at it, it doesn't look awful because everything is so neutral, but it's so bland and overdone. I think when you want to do your home in an all white type of look, there's a few ways to go about it. For example, with my home, before I moved in, I had all of the walls painted white because I think that that it gives it a nice fresh slate and fresh feel to the home. That being said, I did not go all white on everything else in my house. I added in color through artwork, which I think looks so great on white walls, having different frames and artwork around your house, adding in touches of color through pillows and patterns through your rugs. And the best way to incorporate color is through smaller items that can be replaced. So for example, if you are really on a chartreuse kick right now, which I love, that's one of my favorite colors. If you incorporate chartreuse through some pillows or a throw blanket, some art, maybe some knickknacks, snacks, some, some dishware. In a few years, if you're over that color, super easy to swap out. So if you have an all white home and you really don't want to incorporate any colors, at least incorporate some layered neutrals. So let's put in some different shades of white, different beiges, different grays, at least give it some type of substance. And I think a lot of people are inspired by Kim Kardashian. A lot of people follow her trends and her whole house is white and whatever. But to me, it's just boring. If you're going to have all white, at least have cool art. That's all I have to say. Another interior design trend that I wanna to touch on is something that I don't personally hate. I think if you take this trend in moderation, it could stay a while, and that is the tiled tables. When I first saw this trend, I actually really liked the graphic lines and the incorporation of tile into a, a table that might sit in your family room. I think what's important about this trend is to not go overboard with it. Don't spend thousands of dollars on a tile console table. I think if you are going to participate in this trend, definitely make it yourself. There's tutorials all over TikTok on how to make these. I think incorporating something small with this is great, like a little side table or maybe a little console. I don't think you should go crazy with it. I don't think there should be multiple items that are tiled throughout your house. I actually tiled my own squatty potty because I was like, oh, this would be kind of a fun way to incorporate this like tile table uh, in I thought maybe the best idea would be a squatty potty. I don't know. So I made a squatty potty, a tiled squatty potty, and it turned out pretty cool. It's extremely heavy though. So just keep in mind that if you do make one of these tables yourself, uh, they're really heavy because it's tile. So not fully against it. I'm just saying take this guy in moderation. We are now going to touch base on a TikTok trend that is everywhere. We see it in every single person's bedroom and that is LED lights. First things first, I don't hate LED lights. I think LED lights add such a cool touch of warmth if you use them in the right way. Everyone has their LED lights up in their corners and that is where we are going wrong because the LED lights should be hidden because at night it sure it looks fine because it's dark but in the day that just looks like shit. So when you're doing LED lights you want to make sure that they're hidden. So for example you would put them under your kitchen cabinets because then it gives this illusion that there's lights you don't actually see the LED strip. Basically, just put your LED lights anywhere where you cannot see them. So put it under your bed, behind your bed, behind your cabinets, put them inside your closets, put them under your cabinets in your kitchen. Unless you're in a college dorm, you really don't want these things showing. Just a little tip. A nice alternative to LED lights are can lights. I love incorporating can lights around my home. I have one that I stick behind one of my large trees in my family room and it really adds a nice touch of warmth. So if you don't have a spot to hide your LEDs, try a can light. Try putting a can light behind one of your plants or in the corner of your room. It actually adds a really nice touch of warmth and it's hidden. Next, we're gonna talk about a trend that has been here for a while, but I think that people are just overdoing it. Kind of like the vomit of boho, where people see a style and they're like, this is it, I'm doing my whole house in this, this is all I want. And that is the overuse of mid-century modern. I admit I love mid-century style. I have a few pieces in my home. And I think that the mid-century modern trend is just a little bit overdone. I think having a real mid-century piece or something that looks a little bit more authentic is, is better and it's more timeless for your home because mid-century really doesn't ever go out of style if you do it right, if you get a nice piece that is an authentic mid-century piece. And even if you are on a budget, if you go on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, or offer up, there are tons of mid-century pieces being sold for pretty reasonable prices. And if you really like mid-century style, then yeah, incorporate a few more pieces of it. Like for me, I have maybe 
two pieces in my home that are mid-century and my place is really small so I felt like if I added any more it was just going to feel way too mid-century style so just do it in moderation and try to find the authentic uh, vintage mid-century pieces whereas the Wayfair versions that are just a little bit more cheap and lastly the trend I have been wanting to talk about because again this is one of those things where I'm actually incorporating this style into my home but I'm trying to be very careful about it and that is 80s and 90s patterns I'm talking squiggle mirrors I'm talking squiggle candles I'm talking the checker print. I'm talking about pretty much anything that's like a pastel squiggle design that kind of reminds you of Full House. I think taking really small pieces of it is smart. For me, I really do love the checkered trend because I really like graphic lines. I really like anything kind of grid. I love a stripe. I did get a rug in the checker print and I don't think it will really go out of style, but I'm trying to only do maybe one or two pieces of this trend in my house. I just don't think you want to invest a lot of money into these 80s and 90s pieces. I've never really been a fan of pastels anyways. It's just not really fully my style. I think trends like this are really fun to participate in. They're just not trends that you want to spend a lot of money on. All right, so that's it. I've finished my second round of <laughs> shit that I don't think you should put in your house. I'm currently working on a video to give alternatives to this so it's not all negative or whatever but you know this is just what I don't like so if you like my opinions then subscribe and watch my channel and if you don't I might pop up on your for you page just scroll on by uh, no need to leave a comment telling me I'm mean and nasty because I hate faux vines sorry y'all so that concludes another episode of shit that I don't think you should do to your home don't do this to your home or do I don't care see ya